Hi there. Welcome to Module 3 on Sexuality on, in the Bodies. First, some housekeeping, then a bit of discussion about this week's materials and assignments. Okay, so first, overall, we've been pleased with the quality of your homework and thread of discussion. We sent out an announcement earlier this week, and I hope you had a chance to look at it before doing your homework as well as participating in the thread of discussions. Um, that announcement gave you an example of kind of the difference between an A-level response in a thread of discussion and a C-level. And what we're hoping to do is kind of up the quality of the discussion that we're seeing when you respond to other classmates. So what we're looking for you to do is to really engage with each other um, through the materials about the subject matter. So feel free to agree or disagree. Um, use the text, use the videos in order to support the, the arguments that you're making with each other. All right? Interpret the articles or the stories with the videos. Um, use several of the pieces to kind of couch your response. That would be a real high-level discussion that we're looking for. Um, for the homeworks, nice job. The one thing that I remember that I, I was typing for almost each of you was, you know, make sure that, that you use correct kind of in-text citation. And I gave you an example of how to do that. Okay, second, you'll see a practice exam, all right? Next week, so the fourth week, is the midterm, and this week, the third week, there's a little practice exam to give you a taste of what the exam will be like. So this practice exam is worth zero points. It's three questions that are similar to the kinds of questions that you'll see on the full exam, and you'll have four minutes to do that exam. In this one, you get to do it a couple of times or however many times you'd like, um, just so that you can get a sense of your timing. Know that you can't redo the full midterm. All right, so again, you've got a practice test. I hope that you do it so that you'll know exactly what you have in store for you next week. All right, and again, that exam, it will be open book, but you'll see that the questions are complicated. You don't have time to be kind of looking in your text, so that's why I have kind of encouraged you through the syllabus and that first um, podcast to kind of keep notes every reading, every website, every video that you know what are the author's key points, how did she, he or she kind of use evidence to get to those points and I think then you'll do fine on, on that midterm. All right, third, we've decided that during the midterm and final you needn't do homework or threaded discussions. That's too much even for a summer school class. Thus, we've redone the points for the class a bit. So everything up to now has remained the same. But for modules 5, 6, and 7, the thread of discussions and homeworks will each be worth 40 points. And thus, the total number of points for the class has changed just a bit, from 800 down to 790. And the range of points for an A, B, or C has obvi obviously changed just a little bit. So right now, an A is 720 to 820 points. But with this change, an A will be from 711 to 790 points. So you know, I have changed the syllabus. Um, to indicate what these new kind of point levels are and please take a look at that. But again, for week four, there will be no graded threaded discussion or homework, although we'll open up the threaded discussion for an exam review, but again, no points associated with it. And there'll be no point, there'll be no homework or threaded discussions in week eight, but we've upped the point value of those discussions and homeworks for weeks five, six, and seven. Okay, so that's it for housekeeping. And now let's turn to the readings for this week. All right, so one of your possible threaded discussion answers involves the piece on straight girls kissing. And I wanted to point out that 
I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, have been following the news this week about the mass murder in Isla Vista, California. And know that that is the same community that the authors did their research in for that piece on Two Girls Kissing. I, th I believe that there have been seven deaths and seven individuals hospi hospitalized. The murderer is a man by the name of Elliot Roger. He had posted a kind of manifesto or a website or something like that regarding his plans and that they were designed, that his murder was designed as retribution for the failure of girls to date him and that he was still a virgin. So, of course, this is the act of one individual. But there's lots of commentary out there now talking about what are the messages that both young men and young women get about sexuality, what is a sense of entitlement that exists, and we'll talk more about this when we do the section on violence, and in particular violence against women. Um, we will acknowledge that of the kind of mass murderers, and I believe that there are 71 in the past five years in the United States, 70 of them are men, and that with victims of domestic violence, 85% are women. So these, this is data and a reality that we'll grapple with in just a couple of weeks. But I thought it was relevant for you to kind of know that where that research was done, which is right outside of the Santa Barbara campus, that that's where that rampage just happened. Okay, now I want to turn to two of the pieces that were assigned for this week, both of which are, are complicated. All right, the first one, the Loose Lip Sync Ships, which is a great name. And who would ever have guessed that the loose lips that were being discussed are vaginal lips? And it, this piece juxtaposes this relatively new cosmetic surgery, labiaplasty, that is seen in the United States with a practice seen mostly in African countries that has been outside of those communities universally condemned, right? And that's the practice that has been referred to as female circumcision, female genital mutilation, clitorectomy, or as the authors talk about it in this piece, you know, female genital operations, right? Okay, so what I want you to think about is how the author kind of constructs the argument about labiaplasty as something that American women, some American women, are pursuing and the way that it is talked about as cosmetic surgery and choice and cosmetic surgery being something that we perceive as a woman's right within the realm of a woman's right to choose right versus the universal condemnation of the practice in Africa of removing of vaginal lips and the clitoris. All right, again, it's a complicated piece. All right, which moves us to another complicated piece. The, the last piece that says beyond pro-choice and pro-life. Okay, so this is kind of a major issue in the United States, abortion, right? And we have what are perceived of as kind of two camps, all right, pro-life and pro-choice. And this piece tells us to go beyond those, those kind of polarized camps and instead to look at this issue very differently. And it starts by 
giving us some of the transcript of interviews that the researcher did and how the respondents adopted both language. Yes, I am pro-life, but obviously the behavior associated with pro-life is pro-choice. All right, how do we interpret that? Okay, so the author has us start there with some very complicated responses to the simple question of are you pro-choice or are you pro-life? And then says, well, you know what? Those complicated answers make a whole lot of sense if we use an analogy of how to think about prison and race. Okay, so we immediately switch from where we think we're just talking about abortion, we are talking about abortion, to an analogy of prison and who goes to prison. The author then takes us to think about behaviors that are being criminalized in relation to pregnancy. All right, so we start thinking about, for example, you know, should we be criminalizing individuals for choices made, all right, during pregnancy? Use of drugs. Well, what drugs, right? You know, caffeine, alcohol, crack cocaine, okay? All right, all of us say, no, none of those are good. But who's getting criminalized? Who's being reported? And then with kind of the move towards, all right, who should become pregnant? And who are we incentivizing to not be pregnant? All right, what about the, the $200 for sterilization? Or there have been programs that are called dollar a day programs. And those dollar a days are for young women, typically girls, who have already given birth to one child. They're given a dollar a day for each day that they aren't pregnant. All right, are these good? How do we think about these? The author then moves us to kind of a notion of reproductive justice as different than pro-choice or pro-life. All right, again, this is a really complicated piece that takes us a little bit further than what we've done in the first couple of weeks of kind of learning terms, learning to kind of look um, more broadly than perhaps what our own kind of standpoint is and how we live in the world to kind of think about these issues in a policy Look at these issues that will require some kind of policies in a very broad and complicated way. All right, so I hope you enjoy these pieces as much as I did and that they make you think. All right, and I very much look forward to your homeworks as well as your discussions. Okay, I hope that you're having a good week. Bye now.